Hello, Mistress Kamiya. So we officially have a quorum of three members. So I'm going. We're going to uh, start the meeting. And Mr. Kazan, I'm not sure if you want to uh, be acting chair for now. Uh, I guess because we can, well we have a quorum. Is that correct? Yes. And I believe the chair was going to be here. I didn't hear otherwise. So I guess we'll go ahead and yeah, go ahead and start and. Uh, uh, take role to establish, officially establish the quorum. Okay, so call to order at 5.32 p.m. And I will start roll call. Mr. Juan Avila. Mr. Mike Hazen. Present. Ms. Rosie Centeno Hinojosa. Ms. Yvette Contreras. Ms. Alejandra Cadena. Present. Mr. Valentin Escamilla. And Mr. Angel Guerrero. Uh, we are pending his oath information, Mr. Kazan. We're pending, I'm sorry, uh, say again? We are pending his oath information oh. from the city secretary's office. Okay, so then do we uh, do we have officially, do we have a form or do we yes. have just two? Okay. Um, the agenda, Mr. Escamilla was uh, sworn in this past Friday after the agenda was posted, but uh, Mr. Valdez informed me that we are able to conduct a meeting with Mr. Escamilla. All right, excellent, welcome. Um, I guess we can, since we do have a quorum, have the members had a chance to go over the minutes of the last meeting. We provided the, uh, I believe Ms. Aguilar sent the PAC members uh, the packet where the minutes are included and some of the agenda items. Ms. Sandy? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, apparently we have two. Uh, I'm not sure how did that happen. So uh, give me one second. This one is the official because this is where we have tech, uh, recording. So give me one second so I can go back to the other link. I'm gonna shut down the other one and ask them to reconnect to this one. Mr. Avila is in the other one. So give me uh, like half a minute. Um, I just advise the other WebEx to, to please reconnect again. So hopefully uh, everybody else will join us here uh, shortly. Uh, Eddie was there, Eddie Bernal, Mr. Avila, and Gustavo was there. So they should be joining here shortly. Thank you. I guess in the meantime, if uh, members yes. have a chance that are here, have a chance to start reviewing or looking at the minutes. And then that way, whenever the uh, other members show uh, on this WebEx meeting, we can go from there. Waiting to see if the rest connect here. Um. Eddie and Mr. and Gustavo logged on, but not um, Mr. Yeah. Avila. I just texted them. Uh, I don't. I have to know for Mr. Avila's phone number.
Well, there's someone on the phone that's not identified. I don't, I don't have Mr. Avila's uh, cell phone. I don't know if anybody has it. I want to call him to ask oh. him to please reconnect. I don't have his number. I think uh, Ms. Aguilar is calling him. Okay, thank you. I can send him the meeting link, link right now. Hold on, let me see if I can do that. Okay, yeah, that will help. Hi, Tess. Hi, Claudia. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, good. But I can't, I can't see anyone, but you can see me, right? I guess. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Can you see me or no? No. Just okay. Your name. All right. Thank you. Okay. I, I sent him the link already, Ms. Amiel. Okay. okay. That's the correct link. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, he okay. did. He didn't get the link this um, on Friday. He emailed me. So oh, I sent him. I forwarded him whatever was sent on Friday, but I I'm not sure what link that was. But I just sent him the link right uh, to his email. Hopefully he okay. He's able to log on. Mr. Avila doesn't answer. Oh well. Okay. Well, uh, let's, uh, if, I mean, if it's all right with the um, the rest of the committee, I guess we can move on until we can get Mr. Avila to hopefully sign in here in the next few minutes. Okay. But in the meantime, we can, you know, take care of a little bit of business and kind of get us or keep us a little bit on track. Um, so if... Uh, I'm hoping that the board members had a chance to, or the uh, committee members had a chance to look over um, the minutes of the meeting. And uh, I'll go ahead and entertain a, a motion to accept the, meet, uh, the minutes of the meeting unless there's some changes or something or discussion on them. I think Mr. Avila logged on. Oh, good. Mr. Avila? Mr. Avila, can you hear us? Let me see if you can see the chat. This camera is on. Do I put you on speaker on my phone? Mr. Avila's audio is not working. Um, he's having some difficulty, so he uh, said to go ahead and start. He's going to try to figure it out. Thank you, Mr. Avila. Okay, so we can continue. <laughs> you were on the approval of minutes, Mr. Kazan. That's correct. Uh, we were looking to see if there was going to be a motion made by uh, any of the committee members? Okay. 
Would you like to make a mo uh, motion, Ms. Cadena or Mr. Escamilla? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is there a motion for approval of the minutes? Okay, is there a second to the second all those in favor of approving the uh, minutes as presented please have a aye i believe we have a unanimous consent on that uh, moving on to the next item for consideration and uh sorry my i had it on my phone and it just went away uh, okay here we go so that's why i like old-fashioned paper sometimes okay so we have already had the uh roll call and we've had the minutes approved do we have any public comments I do not receive any public comments, Mr. Kazan. Okay. Uh, in that case, then we will move on to the district reports. And uh, I guess that would be item number five. So is there a report for district one? District one is vacant right now. District 2 is Ms. Yvette Contreras, and she's not here in the meeting right now. District 1, District 2 is vacant as well. And District 3 is Mr. Juan Avila. Okay. So I'm not sure he has any reports. Okay. Real quick, which district am I? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Case in your District 8. Thank you. I could not remember. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I do not have one, but uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay, District 4 is Ms. Rosie Centeno Hinojosa. District 5 is Mr. Valentin Escamilla. So, Mr. Escamilla, do you have any reports for District 5? No, ma'am. No, no, no. Thank you. District 6 is Ms. Alejandra Cadena. I do you have any reports? Not at the moment, ma'am. All right, thank you. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Kaysen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just uh, for, for the benefit of our um, new members, uh, Ms. Cadena and Mr. Escamilla, uh, I just want to uh, point out that uh, this district report is basically an opportunity for you to bring any uh, specific concerns from your district, whether directly from your council member or um, any uh, opportunity that you might see in the district that you're representing. And also, part of the uh, uh, district uh, committee members uh, is, is if there are any activities that you're doing on your own or not, uh, pertaining to, to grad transit services or transit services, uh, this is an opportunity to bring those up. So that, that this is what it calls for the um, district reports. Uh, again, any uh, particular recommendation that you might have or any directives comments that might be coming from from your uh, council members uh, this will be the time to, to bring it forward. so just super quick hopefully later on COVID permits uh, we can get together and give you a little bit more insight on, on the comedian stuff like that but right now I just wanted to, to tell you what this is about thank you Mr. Okay. Chairman thank you ma'am I appreciate that and that clarification and it's it's good that we do bring stuff up if we, anybody has any questions, because uh, some of us have been around for a while, so we kind of take it for granted sometimes, and we forget that there are new people, and we do have certain obligations to uh, explain things that are going on. And it's also good for the public to also hear what it is that we are uh, doing during the meetings and, and what uh, challenges or, or maybe there's something that we want to say that we saw that was positive. We can also include that during this report. So uh, thank you once again on that. And I guess once we get down to me, I, I don't have a report at this time also. Um, oh, uh, I do want to take a quick point of personal privilege, I guess. 
and just welcome the uh, members on board that are here today. Thank you all very much for accepting uh, to be on this committee. It's a very important and a very challenging and very interesting committee. Uh, you'll all see as you go as we go along. It's not just the reports. Again, since we have certain restrictions under COVID, we're kind of limited on a lot of things that we'd like to be able to to do. But those things that we can, we'll bring them up in this meeting, or maybe uh, y'all have a, an idea of a better way for us to handle what's going on and how we're doing our uh, committee work. So uh, I guess that would be the <laughs> my report on my end. Um, does anybody have anything to add? Uh, um, I, Mrs. Esparza sent me the information about how the committee works in a way, but I just wanted to see what, I guess what our role is as an advisory committee, like what it is that we as members do for you all's department or what we have to help out with, you know, if you all could just give me some information or some feedback on that, just so I can start preparing myself for the other meetings. Oh, definitely. And that's a very good uh, point. We haven't had a uh, an orientation type of meeting in a while, a little bit of a workshop, if you will. And maybe if we can put it into our next meeting to where we can go over our, uh, at least include it as an item, because I don't know if we can at this point, if we can set up a workshop, kind of like the way we used to way back when, with a kind of an orientation workshop, this is what we do, this is um, what the paratransit uh, does, in other words, a lift, and also the fixed route, how they also um, contribute to people being more independent in our community, and uh, things of that nature. So it, that's a very good point. Um, is there a way that we can get this maybe on our next committee uh, meeting or uh, set up a special uh, workshop where people could attend? Uh, yes, my, my recommendation would be to, to set up possibly an item for next meeting. Um, I, I want to say about a year ago, maybe longer, we had the uh, legal department from the city come in present uh, the, the scope of, of this uh, ad hoc committee. Um, and, and I know that they went through uh, the legal aspect of it, you know, a brief review, but went of the, of the bylaws and, and things of that nature. So I'll reach out uh, this, this week to the legal department of the city because they will be the, the, the ones to, to present this to you all. Um, so uh, I'll reach out to see if they're available for the next immediate meeting. Um, I know that the, the attorney that was working for uh, transit, um, uh, he he's no longer with the city. So they're going to appoint another attorney to, to work with us. But we can have the, the item, uh, Mr. Chairman, as an open item uh, for possibly to set up a date and things like that. That way we can discuss a little bit more as to, you know, what extent we want to do with the workshop. So uh, we can put in the item for the next meeting and I'll, I'll reach to the legal department to make sure that they're available. Okay. Do we need to have a, a motion to that effect or is that something that we can just put on without a motion? I mean, you can do the motion and uh, Ms. Cadena did the motion. Somebody can second that. Requesting an, 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 an orientation on, on, on PAC by laws. Okay, so we have a, a motion. Do we have a second? <laughs> we have a second. Oh, yeah. Okay, all those in favor say aye. I including my help myself on that vote. Uh, thank you very much. That, I think that's going to be a very constructive and very informative meeting. Uh, hopefully, we can get it at the next meeting. Hopefully, we can have a presentation, if not as soon as possible after that. So, thank you for that. Um, I guess we move on now to the staff reports. Okay, I will share the ridership report, Mr. Kazan. All right, thank you. Okay, we will begin with the ELIFT ridership report. For the month of January, we had a total of 1,645 riders, as opposed to in 2020, we had 3,653 riders. 
For the month of January, we had a total of 352 cancellations. Out of those 352, we had 217 advanced cancellations and 76 late cancellations. No shows, we had a total of 44. Out of those 44, we had 18 that were can that canceled at the door. We had eight riders that were not ready and 18 that did not answer the phone upon the van arriving. And we had a total of 15 cancellations that were made over the phone. For the Aleph Mobility Report, the total trips for wheelchair customers for the month of January was a total of 26. As of right now, we have a total of 204 active customers, wheelchair customers. The next report is a fixed route mobility device boarding report. And this is on the regular and metro buses. We had a total of 78 riders that boarded the fixed route buses that were in a wheelchair. The last report would be the end of the month registered customers. As of right now, the ALIF department has a total of 654 active customers. We, for the month of January, we had three registered, new registered clients and three customers renewed their eligibility. So for the month of January, we had a total of six customers that renewed and were new registers. Um, Mrs. Parsa. Yes. Because of the, the situation that we have with the, I guess, with the pandemic and the protocols that we have in place, is that affecting some of the cancellations and some of the no-shows, or are we just not getting a, any sort of feedback from those uh, people? No, it, 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 I'm, I'm more than, I mean, I don't want to say this is a reason, but yes, that is, a, that could be a very high reason why. Uh, we have a, a lot of cancellations, Mr. Kaysen. Um Some customers are just, they, they make appointments and they, they just forget to cancel or okay. they just don't want to go in the, they don't want to use the service after all and the, or they don't want to come out. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and these are still per trip, right? We're counting them as a one, a one trip counts as one or like a going and coming trip is actually two trips. Yes. So, yes. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, I guess one way there, one way back. If they uh, didn't show for either of that, would that be counted as two or would that be counted as one? So, let's, if you schedule an appointment and you, it would be a total of four trips. So, that's four cancellations for one person. So, if they cancel the whole week, that's like four times 20 cancellations for that customer. But in reality, it's only, you know, one cancellation per day, but it's four trips. Right, right. Yes. Okay. I was trying to remember if we had that in place. So, uh, in that's a way, why the numbers we, seem high because of that. So, it's per trip. So, that's why you're going to see the numbers high. Okay. I, so I have a question, Mrs. Parsa. Yes. How much do they pay like to take the trip and does it affect them like, financially? Does it affect your department if they cancel? Like, does it cost you for cancellation? If if it's an advanced cancellation, well, it, we can. The driver does not make the trip out to the customer's home. But if they do those right here, you see the seventy six eight cancellations um, or the cancel at the door. Those are 18, 18 trips that actually arrived at the customer's house, and the and the customer did not come out. So it does cost El Metro a total of, I think, I'm not sure if Mr. Gustavo has the, the number or Eddie. There is, I think, I don't want to say a number, but there is a cost per trip. And so it does cost us money for that, Ms. Cadena. About $75. How much? About $75 per trip. $80, $80 per trip. $80. How, sorry, how much? About $75 to $80 per trip. Oh, wow. And is there like a penalty for the people that don't cancel? Like, do you give them warnings or? Yes, there is a cancellation policy. So if you have three or more cancellations for the month or now with the new FDA guidelines, it, it's not necessarily, it used to be, you know, three or more cancellations for the month, but now it's out of those 10% of the trips that you actually book, 
then you get you get notified you get a courtesy phone call and let you know the customer hey you know what you've already you know you're canceling too much what's going on do you still need the service and and we'll talk to them the second warning would be a, le a letter that we mail out to the customer and we let them know which trips they canceled and usually when we send out those letters the customer um you know, they, they, yeah, not that they stop, but they have the, they now call in advance and they cancel. That way it avoids us having to make the trips over there. Okay. And what about if they keep on? If they keep on, we, it, it, it will get to the point where we can actually suspend them from the service. Okay. But it rarely gets to that point, Ms. Cousin. Okay. Okay. And I believe the, the next one would be the budget report that Mr. Gustavo Villarreal is going to. Um, okay, so our budget, our budget report, uh, usually, I guess for um, our new members, it's we'll do like uh, budget fiscal year to date expenses. Um, so on the first column, you see our budget for the whole fiscal year, our expenses in the middle up to now so up to the fiscal year and then our balance for the remainder of the fiscal year usually at the bottom i'll post um the date from where i input the report so on our operations uh support services administration and maintenance we have a year-to-date budget of thirty-three thousand fifty-seven. so far our expenses have been thirteen thousand eight hundred seventy-five, with a balance of nineteen thousand one eighty-two for fuels and lubricants we have a budget of 163196 Our year-to-date expenses are 42962 And we have a balance of 120234 Our insurance, our year-to-date budget is 131000 $131, Our year-to-date expenses are 60555 And our balance is 70445 On our IT budget, we have a budget of 32185 our year-to-date expenses are 62,016, I mean 6,216, and for a balance of 25,969. And our personnel, we have a budget of 1,412,748 of our expenses year-to-date have been 425,791, and we have a balance of 986,957. And all these are year-to-date totals. Mr. Villarreal, on this, uh, on the budget, are we still projected to still kind of be in the black or is it going to come up short at one point? Pretty much every year, I guess, if you really do the cost of uh, cost per trip versus what we collect, uh, we'll pretty much always run in the red. But right now it looks good since it hasn't been halfway through the fiscal year. So, so far, so far, so good. But as we keep going, we'll start noticing the balance decrease. As you can tell, like our operations is already decreasing uh, our personnel. So as, as time goes on, we'll see the, the balances get way smaller. Are there any grants that are coming available or is it still the same as it was before? And the possibility of some grants coming up may not be there for uh, public transportation or are they looking at uh, providing us with some opportunities there? Mr. Chairman, yes, ma'am. Uh, there's, there's actually um, a couple of agenda items for this coming uh, council meeting. So uh, there's an additional 1.5 million dollars funds uh, that are going to be coming in uh, from um, DOT FDA uh, to uh, help us uh, make up for some of the deficit that we we know we're going to have at the end of the, of the year. Uh, being uh, uh, deficits on sales tax and deficits on uh, revenue, fair collection. So uh, this one and a half million dollars, uh, we're going to dedicate uh, almost a million dollars just for deficit completely. It's going to be set aside so we can ensure that, you know, services as far as operations and maintenance will not be, you know, compromised at any point during this 2021. And that's the last of the funding that we know uh, is going to be coming our way. But okay. I'm confident, and, and like Mr. Villarreal was saying before, uh, our figures and, and what we're seeing right now, we should be okay. Uh, this uh, extra funds that uh, hopefully will be approved this coming Monday by council uh, are pretty much going to help us make it through the remaining of, of this fiscal year. 
uh, based on, on current, you know, uh, ridership figures. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Are there any other questions on the budget? If not, I believe outreach is next. Yes, good afternoon. This is Monica Garcia, AGM for um, administration. I oversee the outreach um, program. And I do have Ms. Virginia Ibarra uh, out on sites, you know, being able to drop off information, which is the only thing we are able to do at this time due to the um, unfortunate situation of uh, our city becoming a, a little more um, uh, a little more uh, dangerous with everything with, with COVID. So every other location that we've been trying to reach out before we go out, um, people are asking or actually telling us that they're not receiving anything from the outside public at this time. So we were able to do two visits and drop off information. Further than that, you know, we are um, working on the outreach efforts when it comes to um, making sure that we advise our elderly and disabled population and let them know about our services. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions for me? Uh, just real quick, uh, I, you, I, I guess you look at uh, different sites that might have a uh, bit of population that we may be able to reach out to and then you target those by dropping these things off because again the protocols that are in place and the pandemic so basically your outreach efforts are uh, not necessarily one-on-one -on -one, but they are uh, in areas where you can hopefully uh, get some people i guess uh, i guess a passive outreach to where uh, somebody else may be going there and pick up some of our literature or something to that effect is that correct? Yes, of course, Mr. Kazan. And uh, also, I mean, food for thought, also I do want to specify that um, at this moment, you know, we've been calling, you know, reaching out to doctor's offices and so on, you know, on diverse um, medical, in the medical field. And they have been telling us that at this time, you know, they, they are declining to receive any information or for us to drop off any information due to the fact that they are only at the patient-based um uh, they're only receiving patients. They're they're not receiving any outside population to their locations. And I mean, I understand, you know, their fear, and and we get it. But but I can honestly tell you that you know we are we are reaching out to make sure that we are are trying to set this out and giving them all the information that we have. But also, Miss San Miguel will um, explain to you a little of the efforts that we have going on here in Little Thor later on in the in the meeting. Yes, thank you. I saw that as an agenda item. Yes. Any more questions from anybody else? All right, thanks. Uh, before we move on to the next uh, item, uh, I just received a text from the chairman. He's still having uh, telephone issues or problems with his telephone and he wanted me to convey that um also if i don't know which part of the meeting i guess since we went through roll call we can kind of go back to that um he's asking uh for us to excuse the absence of miss centeno i believe because due to well it doesn't really uh, give me a, an actual explanation but he's asking if we can excuse miss centeno uh, on the basis of, I guess, illness is what I'm kind of reading there. Um, so is there a way that we can do that or has that changed in these bylaws? Mr. Kazan, I don't think uh, on the PAC bylaws, I, nothing like that um, is actually on the bylaws. So this okay. is something that we would need to ask legal if okay. this, because of, uh, you would need to amend the PAC bylaws. Um, <laughs> Can you hear me now? Ah, there's the chairman. There's the I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Can somebody hear yes, me? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Can somebody hear yes. me? Yes. Uh, 
Ms. Trailer. Well, I heard you there for a sec. And actually, I don't know if it would be my long. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm sorry for the inconvenience and the timing. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Mr. Kazan, to answer your question, um, we would um, we would not be able to make the decision as to what constitutes an abs an excuse absence or not. All I know is that as long as you're absent, it's an absence. But that would be something that uh, maybe um, the PAC committee can reach out to the city secretary's office. Yeah, because we would have to obviously go with the uh, whatever the city ordinance is and uh, whatever they. I, I believe they. It did away with the whole excused absences, and now it's just like four uh, absences, three or four absences throughout the calendar year. There are four. Four, yeah. Okay, an absence is an absence. Okay, so we don't have excused absences in that ordinance anymore or anything? No. No, we had looked into that before in previous meetings, if, if we all recall correctly, back like around September, August, and um, they did away with excused absences, and it's just an absence, but that's when they raise the absences to four throughout the calendar year. Okay. Wait and see if Mr. Avila can reconnect with us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see Mr. Avila on the screen. Uh, for some reason, he's not able to, to, to hear us, but I see his, his name popping up, so he is connected, but again, I'm not sure uh, what, what uh, situation uh, he has. He's using a cell phone, that's all I can see. So sometimes it gets complicated. So um, right. my recommendation on, on this one, Mr. Kaysen, if you want to go ahead and, and do the same thing for an agenda item, Hopefully right. we can have legal here for next time and they can help us uh, or give us some guidance. Or like Mrs. Panza suggested, uh, it could be uh, a, a direct call to the city secretary to inquire or just place an agenda item so we can have somebody from the legal department uh, answering that for us. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to see that as a specific agenda item. Okay. Just so that we can maybe clarify um, all this stuff and hopefully uh, wind up getting a, a better feel for the quorums that we've been having um, and hopefully get from there. But uh, if well, I can't make the motion, I'm chairing the meeting at the moment. Um, so if we if we do have something, if, if it's okay with the rest of the committee, if somebody will uh, put that in the form of a motion, uh, that would be great. And somebody else second it, that would be even better. Well, uh, I'm gonna ask one more time. <laughs> Is that okay for somebody for that to be a motion or for the other committee members? Well, we did not get a motion and we didn't get a second. Or at least I, I, didn't. I don't know if you can hear me. Ah, I can, yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, no, I can't hear you again. But it shows that you're on mute. So either you were muted or something happened to you. Is, uh, is Miss... Is Ms. Cadena being muted somehow? Sure. I think she's on mute now. She's on mute now. Can, she, can you hear me, Ms. Cadena? Yeah, she can hear me. She's saying yes. Ah, she's making the motion. Okay. And do we have a second then? Oh, take it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We have an agenda item for our next uh, meeting. All of the favorite say aye. Aye. 
Oh, uh, sorry, I don't know what was going on, but yes, I'm motion. Okay, welcome back. Uh, okay, yeah, apparently we're having some webex meetings. So, uh, what we'll do is we'll move on to the next one. Just for clarification, we did have a motion and a second, and we voted aye in favor of having a uh, clarification, a specific clarification for our next meeting. All right, thank you all very much for that. Um, clarification on ex on absences. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kingston. On absences and excused absences, or if there is, or whatever. The new, uh, whatever the new um, ordinance is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And again, my, ah, so okay, it's not just WebEx. Apparently, my phone is going crazy also. Uh, let me see if I can call this back up. Okay, so the next uh, report is the Revenue Vehicle Maintenance Report, Mr. Kazin. Ah, thank you. And so I'm, we... I will go over it um, real quick, Mr. Kazin. Okay, this thank is you. Uh, the Metro Mon Monthly Maintenance Status Report from the Maintenance Department. The total miles traveled for the lift depart lift vans was a total of 13,679 miles for the month of January. Um, all their PMIs or performance maintenance inspections were on 100% on time. They had a total of one road call for the month of January and the miles between road calls was at zero miles. And at the bottom, you'll see the regular fixed route buses for the month of January. You'll see the miles traveled was 140,889 miles. Um, the total performance maintenance inspections were 100% on time. The road calls with uh, the clinic buses, a total of zero miles. And the miles between road calls with a buses that have um, ramps was a total of 133,235. And the miles between road calls was a total of 7,654. And uh, this was for the month of January. Okay. Would you explain what a road call is? For for the miles between road calls is the miles traveled when they need to um, I guess uh, whenever there's a vehicle breakdown. Okay. So, okay. Oh, not necessarily vehicle breakdown. It can be, um, I don't know, the, the driver just reported something on the, on the bus or the van and, and or maybe the lift wasn't working or something, but um, if that that is not on the report, that was not reported. But that's just what the miles between road calls. So in other words, it's the miles between a bus having to uh, pull over and uh, kind of get taken out of service for at least a little while. Well, it doesn't get out of service. We They switch out the, the bus, they go take another bus. So maintenance goes and switches out the bus. Yes, the rod still keeps going, but that bus itself is taken out this until out it's of service. Uh, yes, it's until it's examined and whatever else uh, is needed to be done, and it's put back in service, right? Correct. All right. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay. If not, we'll go on to the uh, next report. The next report is the update on the purchase of two Lyft vans. Mr. Kazan, we uh, we were, we talked about this last year that El Metro was going to be purchasing an, addi uh, two, an additional uh, vans. And these are based on the specifications by the paratransit advisory committee that was made that they wanted um, the, the uh, paratransit van with a kneeler. And these are the specs. I'm just trying to scroll down. We don't have actual photos, but these are the specifications for the recommendations that were made by the paratransit uh, advisory committee members that um, I don't know if you recall, uh, Ms. Centeno had, had stressed that, you know, that the balance needed, you know, to be a little bit lower 
with the ramp. And so based on those recommendations, El Metro and um, was able to purchase two additional vans with those uh, specifications requested. And, and so you're saying that these vans have the kneelers or the capacity, I guess, the, the kneelers, which means that they will get down lower to the curb so that the ramp itself, if necessary, isn't going to be uh, on a large or quite a steep incline. It's a lot lower incline. Yes. Okay. The total per van was 137,298. And the total for both purchasing both vans was 274,596. A purchase order has already been issued, Mr. Kazan and PAC members. And we should be, I, I mean, we don't have an actual date when we, we will receive the vans, but it should be this year, mid-year maybe. Oh. Well, wait, we just put in the order and it's gonna be mid-year? Well, they already have, I think, right, uh, right Mr. Bernal? Oh. Yeah, the, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Kaysen, uh, yes, real quick on yeah, the delivery on on whether uh, basically on the, on the paratransit bands, uh, it, it ranges from you know uh, eight to twelve weeks. Uh, so yeah, it, it it takes a little while to get them in. Uh, bus that we already know, it takes 18 months to get them delivered. Uh, and, and in the case of the vans, it, it's uh, between uh, 8 up to 12 weeks. Uh, sometimes it takes longer right now with everything that's going on. But uh, literally, we can expect in the next three months from the day that we issue the PO to the date that the van is going to be shipped to us. Uh, it, take, it takes a while. Actually, when you have the, heads in, the dollars in your hand, it takes a while. Yeah, no, no, and, and actually, I was going to say that was, I was thinking that that was going to be pretty quick to get yeah. those vans over because I was thinking that it was going to take around 18 months to 24 months, but how you know, fantastic yeah. to come even faster. The, the 18 months is pretty much for the fixed road buses. Uh, those are for sure uh, 18 months or more. Uh, what I can add real quick is that yes, this these new vans uh, are capable to to kneel for the passenger. Uh, and Sandy, if you can scroll up and to the layout of the van, uh, if you can see, you don't we don't have a lift. We have a ramp. So right. that ramp it is pretty much in line with the curve. But if for whatever reason that curve is a bit lower or is a, li a little bit higher than the van itself. The, the ramp is going to adapt to the angle. Oh, that person is not going to have to climb steps or anything like that. It's just going to walk into the van. So it, it's very, very convenient and safe for the uh, transit passengers. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it, it really doesn't get better than this. Um, this van come at at least $20,000 more than the previous one. Mm -hmm. uh, but based on the feedback, I mean, the riders, uh, some of them take you know, a couple of trips to get used to it, but they do, and then they really appreciate the fact that, you know, again, it, it is easier you know, have, uh, to climb up stairs or anything like that. Uh, we are also requesting additional uh, AC capabilities, meaning that the van is going to be able to remain cooler during the, the summertime, and it should be faster to, to get them to warm up when it's cold. So uh, they're, uh, I want to say, uh, enhanced um, vehicles compared to the one that we had before. So um, again, it comes with the price, about $20,000 more than the other ones. But again, the, the, the safety uh, is going to be first for us and, and for our passengers. So uh, this is pretty much the, the outcome. So uh, hopefully we'll see you here soon. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm sure our, our uh, clients will appreciate that as well. It, uh, yeah, it does make a definite, a big difference, especially for people that have mobility issues. So thank you. Are there any uh, questions or, or comments on, on the vans that are coming? If not, then we'll go to 
the next report, which is, oh, update on the telephone system. Mr. Bernal is going to go over that item, Mr. Kazan. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, Mr. Bernal is there with us. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? Ah, I can hear you now. Thank you. I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, great. I can hear myself. Well, I'm testing this new head headset, and I don't know whether the headsets are, are causing some audio issues, but nonetheless, um, I'm glad to report that we're gonna replace our, our old phone system with the new cloud-based system, uh, Mitel, um, state-of-the-art system with uh, a lot of nice features. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to explain all of them, but uh, I do. I, I can report to you that, that uh, it's much needed. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for me. The telephone system, the telephone system. Doing like automated scheduling, outreach, or all the different things that we've been, the features that we've been using, but I guess in features plus uh, maybe some other belts that we didn't have before. The, uh, the system is basically going to be the same. We're just replacing the hardware. Um, it is much much needed to replace the the, the actual uh, uh, server that we have. Basically, it's we have a, a, a server for the both locations, and and now it's going to be cloud based. It's going to be on uh, through fiber, and the uh, uh, it's going to be basically the same. It's, it's not going to be an auto attendant, nothing like that. The phone call uh, system will, will will remain the same when the customers call in. They will hear uh, a person talk. So. Um, nothing, nothing is going to change other than the fact that we're just replacing the, uh, the equipment. So, yeah, it'll be a better and much better, I guess, more capable of doing it. You're, you're cloud-based now. You really want to have to... Really going to a disaster, disaster kind of setup, you really won't need to have yourself tied to anywhere in particular. The system is, is uh, it, we're, we're buying the same system that the police department is, so okay, you know, they uh, you know, I don't know how long they had it before, but it, it's it's uh, we're we're happy that we're going to get replaced, hopefully. Get it, get it. Uh, a port date, hopefully this month, and we'll we'll uh, we'll move from the old system to the new system, hopefully this month. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's a lot better than the old trapeze day. A lot better than the old trapeze day. And for those that are wondering, that was a twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. <laughs> Uh, do, does anybody have any questions on that, uh, report? Okay, then uh, we'll move on to item eight. The item eight. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to share with you some, I guess, uh, information, general information that has been participating at home with the city of Reno and the efforts to, to bring vaccines out to the public. So, um, the past, uh, second past council meeting, um, motion was made to allow a lift to transport uh, elderly and disabled, basically our uh, a lift eligible passengers to be transported to the vaccination sites and back home. Uh, for those instances where um, certain seniors or disabled individuals 
did not have means to get to the vaccination sites. So that was the one motion that, that passed, like I said, two council meetings ago. So uh, either after uh, Sandy and the rest of the operation team uh, got together, uh, set up the, the protocols to register temporarily said, said individuals to receive the, the transportation. Uh, so right now, uh, nobody has taken advantage of the service, but we are pretty much ready and set if we receive any uh, inquiries to, to receive the service. So, um, that was uh, the one thing that we are um, contributing. Uh, this past Saturday, there was a, a, a massive vaccination effort by the city of Laredo, about 5,000 vaccines. The first, my understanding, uh, statewide, uh, that was called uh, Save Our Seniors, going back to, to those individuals that are not uh, able to, to I mean, they're not ambulatory, so literally they're bed ridden. So those are even harder to transport to a vaccine site. So Sierra Laredo, again, um, taking the lead, a management, uh, cheaper, and, and those individuals in charge of um, uh, that are working through the pandemic, they, they came up with this program to bring vaccines to, to those seniors or those individuals that cannot uh, make it to the vaccine site. So El, El Metro was um, listed as one of those uh, transporting, uh, uh, I guess, vehicles. So one of our vans that uh, it's pretty much brand new and not been put into service uh, was assigned this Saturday. Uh, basically, we will be transporting uh, nurses to to bring the vaccines to those individuals. So El Metro participated this past Saturday and um, I understand there's going to be more of, of such events, so we'll be participating. Uh, I guess just uh, trying, I mean, I'm glad that we're finally being able to, to help the city uh, transporting whether passengers or in this case uh, nurses or medical staff to reach out to um, uh, people with disability that need the vaccine. So that that's pretty much that. I just wanted to report you on that, that that's how we're participating. Uh, we are being open to, to council to management and to the um, uh, emergency response team and, and directly with uh, the health department as well to provide transportation for those individuals that might uh, need the assistance to, to get the services as far as the vaccine. So I just wanted to share that with you. And thank you for doing that because that's something that, uh, well, I, I wasn't aware of and, and I do appreciate the, that you are doing this and that the, you know, the Metro is doing this and, and to help out those people because I mean, those, let's face it, the majority of our clients need some sort of assistance uh, in that area, the, at least a little bit of the time. And, and trying to get a vaccine, uh, from personal knowledge, trying to get a vaccine and getting on there and trying to get a date and all that isn't easy. And then to compound that with not being able to uh, have a way to get to where the vaccines are being distributed. Uh, so I thank you very much because that's a very much needed service. It's uh, something that's a wonderful benefit to the community, in my personal opinion, anyway. And I really do thank you for that. Does anyone have any uh, comments or uh, questions on that item? If not, thank you. I, I really seriously do appreciate that. Uh, well, uh, I guess we'll move on to item seven now. Uh, discussion of possible action or recommendations rather for, oh, and this is the PSA. I believe we asked about that in the last time, at the last meeting. Yes, Mr. Kazan. Uh, we, well, I want to inform the PAC members that um, El Metro is still um, working very hard to coordinate a PSA um, that was requested by by and recommended by the by the committee. Uh, currently, right now, we are waiting awaiting from the city of Laredo to produce a PSA because um, they are we they are following following the health guidelines that the city council mandated. But we are in communication with them. They are well. We have requested the PSA. They will be helping us out. But right now. Um, most of the city staff is working from home and they're following the city of Laredo health guidelines. And as soon as we hear anything from them, we will safely um, start working on the PSA, Mr. Kazan and PAC members. 
Thank you. If possible, uh, can we, uh, I guess, get another update either at our next meeting or the meeting after that to see more or less if anything has changed, hopefully. Uh, I know that we are seeing a decrease in numbers, but that's not a, you know, a guaranteed thing that everything's going the way it should be going. Uh, you know, we still need to count on everybody doing their part on that. Uh, but at least this way we'll kind of have a maybe an idea of where we are on that and see if there's a, an opportunity to maybe do it a different way. Um, I got a, a uh, notice in the mail and then I saw something on TV about uh, there's going to be a play that's going to be all done online and streaming. So maybe we can think outside the box and not necessarily we, but the people that normally do these PSAs and do all that, maybe they can come up with a different method thinking outside the box, like having a play basically done um, online streaming or different things, but just something to think about. So if possible, we can keep getting like regular updates on it and see if uh, maybe, or, or maybe there's somebody over at uh, public access that we can speak to and see if they have any ideas of how we can get this done. But then that's just me. I mean, I'm not speaking on behalf of the, the committee. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, uh, real quick, um, uh, basically we've been going at, at this item for uh, probably a couple of months now, and, and unfortunately right. uh, we've been optimistic and hoping that things are going to get better. Uh, uh, participate on, on at least two or three meetings a week um, uh, with directors and, and the different... Uh, ...to normal. So. Uh, I really don't see the day where we're going to be able to go out, uh, shoot a video, and, and go through a production and, it, and you know, the like. So, uh, basically, what we did, uh, and I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Um, so, again, we realized this is not going to go away. Uh, this is going to be the way we're going to be doing business for some time. So, um, we put them up with well, we're going to call the 2021 El Metro Lift Outreach Program. So, real quick, the, the first action item is what we're already doing and we're reporting to, to the committee and to council in our uh, Friday packages. I mean, we have the uh, in-person, um, in a safe way, delivery of information. This this has not stopped. Uh, we'll continue to outreach uh, to different clinics, like Ms. Garcia explained earlier. We're pretty much knocking doors, and every door that it opens to us, we drop off information. That that's going to continue. Uh, and and going outside the box, uh, we're going to go out with a newspaper campaign. Uh, we're going to be putting on every Sunday, which is typically the day that most people buy the newspaper. Uh, we're going to do it for uh, six consecutive weekends. It's going to alternate with a Spanish and English uh, production of that. We're going to be doing some billboards that are going to be posted in strategic places, and we're actually going to be using one of our vans for that purpose. And then we're going to have a direct mail out by districts starting on the middle of next month. Um, so just to give you an idea, we're trying to, to keep it simple, and, and this is something that uh, Sandy and different members of the staff worked on, uh, very basic. So this same art, it's the same art that is going to be on the newspaper, is going to be in direct mail-outs, and it's going to be placed on billboards. So that is the uh, English version of it, very basic, again. Lyft is here to, to connect you with your destination. It talks briefly about who might be eligible for this. And it's going to talk about, you know, the, the contact information, who to call, where to call. And that is the Spanish version of it. Like I said, you're going to see this on the morning times, every other Sunday. And then you're going to see this in El Mañana, every other Sunday, uh, starting uh, two weeks from now. We have to meet a uh, Title VI requirement. That's the reason that we're doing this in English and in Spanish. Okay. And uh, as far as uh, a billboard, uh, basically we're going to use one or bands. And this is going to be a big choroplast sign. 
same bill English and Spanish. Uh, the good thing is this is going to be uh, a moving billboard per se. So we're going to try to to park this van with this billboard. Uh, the different clinics on the city that we know are um, a, a place with, where whether elderly or disabled visit. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the locations throughout the different um, areas of the city so we can reach out to as many people as, as we can. So this is going to be a massive effort again um, via newspaper, um, via billboards, and, and, and the last um, portion of this effort uh, is going to be a direct mail out. So literally um, every house uh, in the city will be receiving specific information uh, on how to register and how to, you know, you're eligible and the contact information. So uh, this is going to be over the next um, six to eight weeks, uh, extending possibly until April, depending on, on uh, availability for this ads on the newspaper. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be starting in the middle, uh, later part of this month. And that's going to be eight weeks out. So um, we're hoping that again, we're going to literally reach out to everybody in the city to, to let them know of the services that we provide and how to contact us uh, for guidance to, to enroll and, and to take advantage of the service. Um, in the meantime, we're going to continue and pursue uh, the PSA uh, with, with public access, but again, um, until there is a drastic change on the city orders, uh, I really don't see us coming out with, with the PSA soon, and that's that's the reason that we came up with this alternate uh, way of, of, of bringing the information out to the out to the public. Mr. Miguel, hey. yes, I have a question. Is this is like advertisement, right? Correct. Yeah, and is this something you do like on a yearly, or how often do you do this? Uh, at, at this point, Ms. Kana, this is the first time we're going to do it. Uh, and, and basically, we're going to test uh, if this is going to be uh, something that's going to bring out uh, more passengers, uh, more ridership. So okay. I want to say probably mid May, we can come back to you all with a report and saying, you know, this is a month after the campaign. Uh, and yes, it was successful. We received. 200 more applications or 50 more applications. So we'll be able to say, you know, this we should do, you know, two times a year or maybe once a year, uh, things like that. So uh, right now, because of the pandemic, this is kind of the uh, safest way to, to reach out. But it's also gonna provide an opportunity to test these different uh, ways of uh, uh, communicating. Uh, so we'll see how effective they are. If we prove that this is effective, we probably wanna do this twice a year. Okay. Uh, and things like that. So, uh, again, this is the first time we've done it. So, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we're hoping that we're going to reach out to more people. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Well, actually, not, uh, not necessarily a question, just a comment. I wanted to say thank you for uh, coming up with this and, uh, and coming up with the uh, outreach that you're doing because I know it is difficult uh, and really just it, at least for me personally, I appreciate the fact that we're trying to reach out to some people that may or may not know that uh, they are eligible, that the service does exist, and that there are a lot of safety measures that have been put in place that they can avail themselves of this service and not stay at home, uh, you know, locked away from everything, not being able to get their health care or uh, thinking that they, that they have no options available to them. And um, yes, this pandemic is, is a terrible thing. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I guess we've all been touched by it in one way or another. Um, and uh, hopefully this is a way that it's, it won't be the new normal, but it'll hopefully offer a lifeline to some people that may be struggling, that may be in a new situation for themselves, that may be recovering from the, the COVID itself. And they may not know. Uh, at least that's that's been my motivation uh, all this time to be kind of pushing for some sort of outreach and letting people know and understand that they do have a service available to them. And uh, that, yes, we will be uh, seeing better days. Uh, 
but right now let's try and, and try and help each other out as best we can with these things. And I do appreciate the effort and the, uh, um, the ideas that you've come up with and the different things that uh, you all are doing to let people know that there is a way for them. We uh, do offer a uh, way for them to have a sense of independence, um, a sense of being able to go to the, again, get their uh, medical uh, treatments, to uh, go to the grocery store, get things like that, or you know whatever it happens to me it to be, uh, but that this is a service that is there and it is available to them. And again, thank you very much for doing that and reaching out to these people. Yeah, and and I'm not gonna sit here and take all the credit. It's, it's basically everybody's uh, effort, you know, from from Sandy, Rosa, um, Garcia, Eddie. I mean, we're been going at it for for like. I say a couple of months and, and we're getting to the point that yes, we have to uh, try different avenues that, that are safe for the public, that are safe for us, and at the same time meeting that need. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a team effort and, and hopefully we'll be able to report back, uh, like I uh, told earlier to Ms. Cadena, we'll be able to, to report back uh, positive news as a result of this outreach. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, or any other questions or comments? You know, PAC monthly meetings, uh, date and time, and um, I guess I'd like to also throw out there um, to try and keep these uh, video conferences as well in there whenever we do get the opportunity to come back um, to having our meetings in person. But is, is there anybody, does anybody have any ideas or should we um, wait till our next meeting again to see if something has changed? I mean, I like the idea that we discussed before of having them at different times, let's say at noon, um, you know, uh, maybe different days, depending on what works best for uh, people here in the meeting. I do like having the flexibility of having them online because it's allowed me to attend more meetings than I would normally be able to. Uh, but, you know, the day and the time and I guess the manner right now is being dictated by uh, what we're going through. But do we discuss it now or do we push it again for another meeting or uh, you guys let me know. This is such an outlet. I will take that myself. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah, I can hear you now. Okay. okay. Uh, say again. Can you repeat what you just said? Uh, let's discuss it now. Like as me. Uh, right now, I get out of 5 30 from work. Okay. Uh, I work at the so I get work at the So. I kind of have to have distance from work, but like, somewhere I'm stuck. It's, oh, I don't have the service. Like, I'm not one of the people who does not like, uh, every short time on the Monday at like, home. Tomorrow's for a one to go to home. So I would say the meetings to start at 6, if that's good, like for me, it would be 6 p.m. Because it takes about like 20 minutes to get to my store and get a perfect service. My phone through my Android or through my Galaxy. So I'm using my work's laptop, so I'm here and that's why I'm getting the service. So I can be involved with the for my first time. Because if I, if that's the reason if I was on the streets, go home, I wouldn't get service, so I wouldn't miss my first meeting. Right. So like for me, it will be at six o'clock, and right now as well, I have another meeting I have to go to after this, but it's still going on. So um, I'm doing my committee first, then I'll go to the next, or notify them that I'm going to be late. So, and so, so I would say let's have like, um, this is fine, but at 6, that would be great for you guys, for everyone, or I would say 6.30, or I would say one of those two times for the best times for everyone, I can say, or for me. I've been in other meetings before, like we usually start at 6 30 or sometimes at 7. But we don't try to keep it long, we try to keep it short, like an hour. So we have to because 
some of them must have to do something personal, some has to go to grandparents, some have kids, some have things that they have to do. So that's, I would say, like, I think keep it like minimum, like an hour and 15. Or, like, we can start to talk to you guys. You guys make the decision. That's my opinion. That's, I, like, I like to be open minded to this. I like to say stuff like that for everyone. For everyone's sake. I don't know whether whoever has a comment or anything. Anyway. I'll just add to that. Uh, to me, I write now, I'm kind of flexible. Uh, for the times and the day, most of the time, um, and now because of course we're doing it remote. Um, if and if we stay remote, I mean I've got it works out for me no matter what you know whatever you all decide. Uh, once we start going in person, I guess that's a little bit different, because, uh, and that's also going to be I don't know if we're still going to have to meet at the at the city council chambers or not, any or the city hall. Uh, I kind of liked it better when we were meeting at El Metro, <laughs> but that you know, was a lot easier and a lot. But anyway, uh, so I mean, for me, I'm, I'm flexible uh, for the remote stuff, um, but I, I I don't know how uh, we would need to do this since there, right now there's only three of us on here because uh, our chairman isn't. I don't see him on here, but he wasn't able to communicate with us, which is another side of, or the other side of doing this remote. Um, I don't know if you all want to take some action right now or make a recommendation and then see if we can uh, either act on it on, at maybe our next meeting or act on it now. I, I don't know. Um, what would you all want to do? I would think this is something that everybody should be part of. Okay. So what I guess I'm new here, case. so I obviously don't think I should even comment on this, but I think like everybody else, well, I have a job, you know, and it's an mm -hmm. eight to five job. And yes, it, I can join a meeting from work, but it would have to be obviously during a lunch hour, which I think right. would happen with a lot of people here in this meeting right now. Um, after hours, you know, I think the earlier the better. I, I don't think anybody would want to be in the meeting from seven to nine at night, right? We all have families. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think this is something that everybody needs to agree on as part of, yeah. Okay, then what we can do is uh, we could uh, I guess table and put it on for the next meeting, which hopefully, you know, we'll get all the technical glitches out of there so that it won't take <laughs> the two hours that it's taking. Uh, yes, you're right. I try and keep it to an hour, uh, maybe an hour, 15 minutes, but I try and keep it an hour and under. Uh, but anyway, it's been fun today uh, with the challenges. But what we can do is just go ahead and move that item if you guys are okay with it. Uh, just move it to the next week. We'll just table it till next week. And I guess if I'm seeing people nodding in an agreement, so I guess that's a first and a second. And all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. So we tabled it for the discussion at the next meeting. And, and now my phone has decided, which is where I'm looking at my agenda. I used to print these things out, but okay. So I guess what that means then is, uh, do we have anything for executive session? If not, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Thank you all very much for being here, for your input and, and your patience with whatever was going on tonight with the technical difficulties. Um, yes. So if there is a motion, or if anybody wants to say anything before we leave. No? Okay. <laughs> if there's a motion to adjourn, I'll go ahead and accept that. Thank you. There's a motion. Is there a second? There's a second. There's a motion and a second. So the meeting is adjourned. I don't even have to take the, the count on that. I wanted to say thank you all for being here. Thank you for your patience. And hopefully our next meeting will run a little smoother. A lot smoother. Thanks.